colors. The sickness continues to spread through the guest Pelgo. Until we get help from the outside world, we're on our own. So we've had to help ourselves. We strip the medical equipment from the Hope and synthesize the vaccine. For now, whoever controls this vaccine controls the Ark. No surprise, Mokoena will kill to take it from us. The vaccine must reach the people. We can't let Mokoena steal it and ration it for priority personnel. Hold security off long enough for us to move the vaccine to safety. Do not let Mokoena's men steal it. Drive them back into the sea! Of course, you think Chan doesn't have a plan B? Brother, stop the maintenance bot! We must protect the vaccine! Guard the gate! Engineers, get ready to disarm any charges! Today, we strike back! Hey guys, Lieutenant Dan here, and I'm bringing you a Brink gameplay commentary. Now, Brink is a pretty new game. It's only Friday, what is it? May. Oh, it's Friday the 13th, actually, so maybe I shouldn't do this commentary. My computer might explode or something. But it came out this Tuesday, and I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I played like three hours. I got it Wednesday with my subscription to Gamefly. Um, and I, I played for three hours, so I obviously enjoyed it quite a bit. And I'm kind of disappointed in reviewing sites like IGN because I think they rate it too lowly. Uh, IGN gave this game a 6. Which it does not deserve, I think it's more around an 8 out of 10, of course. And I was really happy when that, the IGN's video review, that video received, 85% of people disliked it on YouTube, so that made me pretty happy. So, I don't know how many people still really like IGN, it seems they only really like the big series games now, like the Call of Duty series, but, oh well, what can you do? But anyway, to give you a background, uh... Brink was developed by a Bethesda and Splash Damage also worked on it, and basically the storyline is you're on the Ark, which is a like floating city, supposedly like eco-friendly, but city that is supposed to be like a the future of like the future way to live was on these this floating basically city island settlement, but over the years like you lost contact with the rest of humans and. You know, too many. There's overpopulation. There's slums. There's disease. So there's two factions. There's the security group, which um, is trying to maintain order and resistance, which wants to leave the Ark and go look for other people in the world. Which is, you heard the leader of the resistance, Chen, giving like the briefing in the beginning. And what they've done is really they've merged multiplayer and single player. So your same character that you use in single player or multiplayer, you'll earn XP in both of them, and you'll get the same abilities and weapons and 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 perks and stuff like that um, they've also they've as you notice they put in like nice little intros in the in the loading screen and after that there will be a, if you skip the like the part where Chen briefs you there's the cutscene and you see that which I think is in the campaign so that's pretty cool so it like gives you a real like sense of you're on an actual mission you're not just there to like kill people and this game really isn't about just killing people it's more point base for example on online games they don't even show kills at the end they show one person gets most kills award but that's it really uh, like assisting your teammates pays off more and paying the object playing the objective pays off more so you get points for following objectives when you press up on the d-pad this circle will show up which I've done in the game and you can choose your objective the main objective right now is just defend this gate from them uh, they're trying to blow up the gate so that robot can get through to um to pick up something or take something from us but we can crawl underneath the gate but they need to blow it for a robot and the things you will always need to play a certain c class in this game to uh to win so there's four classes it's a class based shooter kind of like team fortress there's a soldier there's a medic there's an engineer and there's a agent or espionage person or a spy and the great thing is they don't have health advantages or speed advantages or anything like that over each other um, they just have different abilities. For example, the soldier can throw Molotov cocktails like you just saw me do, and he can resupply himself and other people on his team with ammo. Um, the medic can boost his own health, his teammates' health, 
or get up people who are down. Because in this game, you don't die immediately. You get downed, and then you have a chance a medic can come and throw you a syringe, and then you can revive yourself. Um, engineers can buff their own damage or teammates' damage, which is really nice and actually helps a lot in gunfights. But then again, you can't heal yourself, so it's, a, it's really a trade-off. And they can also construct um, mo like little turrets, like in Team Fortress 2. The agent can hack terminals and can like disguise themselves as enemies. Like if there's a fallen body, they can go over and they'll they'll put on that outfit until they shoot or do something. No one will be able to know on the other team, so you can sneak up behind enemy lines and really surprise people, which is a lot of fun. But uh, the way that the games work is like you'll get points for just standing around an area by the objective, guarding it, like a lot of points, and you get like 75 points for giving ammo or healing a guy, which is a lot. And I don't know how many points you get for a kill, you get points each time you hit people. But, it's really a lot of XP for just helping out your teammates. And the thing is, you can't win if you try to lone wolf, wolf it, because if four guys come at you, like, you lose. Like, in games where my whole team advances as one, it's epic, because the enemy can't do anything, because they'll come in one and two at a time, and you'll just mow them down. And, like, you will have to play all the classes in this game because, for example, in this they need to play soldiers to plant the bomb. And if they planted, if none of us were engineers, we would automatically lose because, um, or at least that stage of the map because no one could defuse it. And I've had that happen where I didn't know I had to be an engineer to defuse, so I tried to defuse a soldier and we just lost. But the thing is, there's different rounds of the map. Like normally, this is the shortest game I had, so I posted it. There's two or three objectives, and they all have like 10 minute time limits, and there's an attacking and defending side. Now, if the defenders like hold the attackers off for the first 10 minutes, they win, but usually that doesn't happen, I guess, push back to the second or third objective. Um, so the games are quite long, but I haven't really noticed it, you know, because it's always like, there's always like big groups of people going at each other, which is pretty cool. And, you know, all the guns are fairly balanced. The com there's a bunch of assault rifles, SMGs. Shotguns aren't overpowered. Um, there's like no one-shot kills. There are heavier-powered uh, assault rifles, which are like semi-auto, but they're they're balanced because they're they take they're like three shots or two to the head or something, or one to the head and one to the body. But you know they only have six shots in the magazine and take forever to reload, while my assault rifle has 30 and SMGs can have like 45 shots, and there's tons of attachments, there's uh, round drums, there's basically dual mags, there's extended mags, there's a ton of sights, silencers, all that good stuff. Um, but what really makes this game unique, I guess, is besides the fact that you're forced to cooperate, and people really do seem to cooperate, is the combat system itself, and the, the fact that you rely so much on movement. They have this system called SMART, which basically means when you hold down your left button, uh, which makes you sprint. Whatever you run over, uh, depending on your character type. Uh, there's three character types. It basically means how big your guys. There's light, so you're a skinny guy who's left health but can run really fast and can like wall hop, like do legit parkour and run on small ledges. Medium, which you know, medium speed can still do some parkour. And then there's heavy, who's just this massive guy with a lot of health, but he doesn't move very fast. So, and I haven't seen any problems with taking those guys down. So it's pretty balanced. Um, but you can run over obstacles and stuff, which makes it really easy, so you can, like, climb over walls and stuff, and that doesn't get in the way anymore. And the coolest thing, I think, is, do you see that guy? He just slid. Um, so that, you thought the dolphin dive was cool? Sliding is freaking epic. You can even slide into people to melee them, and you, like, slide tackle that, them and knock them down. And, uh just go to town on them. So you can slide out of danger. It's actually really helpful. A bunch of guys come around a corner. You sprint back around the corner and slide like under a table or something and you're safe. I also love the melee system in this game. Um, there's no you, no one hit kills. Melee just knocks people down. Same with grenades. So those aren't a problem. You can't really spam grenades or anything. I haven't encountered problems with grenade launchers. So just really fun game where you can just run around, sprint around and have a good time. So if you'd like to see more gameplay, I'm going to be posting a lot on my channel and a let's play of this gameplay if this gets of the campaign. If this gets uploaded to LGU, thank you so much for uploading this. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry I had to rush it, but I just had to cram like everything about the game into a 10-minute gameplay. So thanks for watching.